So, hello, good afternoon. So, can can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Super. Okay. So, let's continue from previous session. And today we'll see some advanced topics. And uh, I don't have power, so you will hear some annoying beep sound in between. Sorry for that. Um, okay. So yesterday we have seen the basics and the fundamentals. What is list? What is operators? How do you install Python and all? So today we will see little bit of little bit advanced topics like uh, uh, conditional statement, looping, what is functions. So little bit of things and then I'll teach you about what is packages and I'll show you how to connect Python within AWS a little bit an example. So on my side, I'll be giving you the basics and the fundamentals. That means up to 50 to 60 percentage of Python, the basics will be covered by me. But there is more things in Python. You have to learn so much, so many things to become a master in Python. So within two days, I don't expect you people to be a master in Python. So just my job is here to teach you the basics and the fundamentals. Just a kickstart example. Uh, some people have this fear okay that's a coding language it is a little bit difficult so how how as a beginner how can i go and start learning that language so that is my job here to give you the kickstart to learn start learning python okay so let's continue from our yesterday's class and, to, and today also the topics will be easy everything will be i'll give it as simple as possible but, but the starting uh, before starting our today's class i'm going to change my id so what is an id is yesterday we have used a very basic id that is Ideally, I told you after installing Python, so you will get this very, very basic idle. So, okay, so we have been typing code over this ID. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my ID. I'll also tell you why am I changing my ID. So, okay, so first let's change my ID. So go to Google search for Visual Studio code. So you can use any ID you want. There are uh, NetBeans, PyCharm, so many different, different IDs. It is your preference. So you can use any ID you want. Okay, so we have, if you search for Visual Studio Code, you will get this. Make sure you're searching for Visual Studio Code. So don't forget this code part. If you're not giving that code part, and if you download, if you search for it, you will get a different program. So I'll also show you the proof. So if you search for Visual Studio, you can see there are three different versions. So one is Visual Studio and one is Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio is uh, uh, two to three GB of uh, data. So uh, if you download it, it will be so much big. So we don't want that part. We only want this Visual Studio code. Okay, so simply click on Visual Studio code. So download for uh, Windows. You can also use repository to install on Linux. So simply download for Windows. So click on that download. So it will start downloading. So let's wait a bit. Okay, so save. So for, just 56 uh, MB. Yes. Jason, uh, commanding also, we will use only this visual co code only. For the okay, uh, no. Uh, Visual Studio Code is for global. Like example, you are, you can type C, C++, Java, any programming language, any programming language out in the world, you can use this one uh, one IDE. So that is the advantage. Because in this IDLE, you can only type Python. So if you want to write JSON or else any YAML or anything, your preference, Visual Studio Code has support in it. So that is why many people will use this uh, IDE and also it is one of the top IDEs in the world. So, okay. yep. so simply after downloading, click on install, run, so it will start installing your Visual Studio code. Okay, so I should get, yeah, yeah. So simple, I just, I accept next, uh, no need to worry about anything. Simply if after clicking on install, it will start installing your computer. It will hardly take one or two minutes. So since I already have Visual Studio code, so I will not install that. So after install, there will be no extra steps. You don't have to worry about it. So simply click on install. So right now I'll cancel it. And I'll show you the uh, already installed Visual Studio code. So if you search in start button, you can have Visual Studio code. So let me open it for the first time. So when you open it for the first time, you will get this welcome page. So simply you will not get any of those. You will simply get this welcome page. Okay, so what is this? So what, what, okay, so in this welcome page, uh, you don't have to worry about this. So simply click on file, a new file. Or also you can uh, open an existing file, which we have typed yesterday example. If I click on open, yesterday's file is on desktop. So which is, I gave the name as hello, open. So whatever we typed yesterday, I got that file back and you can start carrying it out. Okay, so no, don't worry about this. So simply I'll come from the first. Suppose if you are very new, you don't have an existing Python file, what do I have to do? So simply click on file, new file. It will open an untitled for, file for you. Okay, so when you're, in, when you're doing this for the first time, let's say uh, uh, what you have to do first, you have to save this file. So same, file, save or else control S, save, okay. What do I have to do? 
make sure you are giving that extension dot py so whatever the name you want uh, example my file this is the name i'm giving make sure you are giving this dot py if you don't give this dot py uh, this world studio code will not recognize that it is a python file but in this ide which we have used sorry okay in this ide which we have used previously it knows that you can only save python file so you don't have to worry about that but in this visual studio code it can used to be save java c c++ whatever the ide there is okay so simply my file dot py so make sure you are giving that extension and save it okay after clicking it you will automatically get this uh, x my sim python symbol over there so uh, my computer already has python in it suppose let's say i don't have java in my computer so if i click new file let me save a java file for you so same uh, hi dot java so if i save it for the first time you may get get this uh, thing so java extension pack is recommended for this file type do i do you want to install or not suppose let's say you're not getting when you are saving python for the first time you will get this the python extension pack is recommended for this file type suppose if you are not give, getting this uh, pop up window what can i do so what is that used for so simply if you go in the left side you can see this button called as extensions so what is this extensions button you in this extension button you can simply search for python if you search for python anything with this star symbol means this is a uh, recognized one this is the original one or authenticated one okay so simply click on that and you will have this button called as install after installing so what is this use do i have to install this extension it is mandatory no it is not mandatory but it has some features such as intellisense some code formatting features refactoring so what is this intellisense and code for formatting is so simply let's say i want to type i am so if i type i it is giving me it is helping me something so example i don't have to here after i won't be typing uh, full sentences i am p okay so it is helping me import so this is the same thing so here after whatever i'm typing the code will automatically help me okay so this is the thing you're trying to type even if i do mistakes also it will tell me that you're trying you're doing a mistake so please change it so that is this feature of intellisense so we need this feature of intellisense since, since it will simply help you to write code faster and better without making any mistakes so that is this extension it is not mandatory we know that in our computer we have installed python we have the interpreter in your computer even you can use notepad to type your code so previously we don't we uh, on the uh, yesterday session we didn't have this visual studio code but we were typing python code so don't worry about this so this extension is not mandatory but simply it will help you so that is why so it, it will also prompt you do you want this extension or not so like how it prompted me for java okay so after installing that extension so simply now i have, i have my file ready so how do i run this file so how do i run this code okay so simply click on uh, say a uh, simple example so print hello world okay done so now if i click on this play button i got my, i'll simply get my output over here so linter pylint is not installed don't worry about this so simply this is for uh, django so i'll change my id okay okay and here after i won't get this so don't worry about that pylint so that pylint is nothing but for debugging purposes for django for multiple files i have been working in my computer right so that is why it is prompting me don't worry about that so simply uh, print hello world so how do i run this file so you will have this play button over here so if you click on play button you will get your output below here so what is this page so this is your command prompt so in your command prompt you are getting your output so simple as that okay fine so now our id is ready we know how to write code how to run this code by clicking on play button so we have this feature of extension there are so many extensions in this marketplace so uh, if you are working in yaml if you are working in jinja or so any other program uh, output came in the down so simply Over click on this play button so if you click on it automatically you will get this output okay so even if your example suppose i'll close all this stuff so i'm writing some sim one single line of code click on that button you will get your output below it's showing linter pylint is not installed uh, for you or yeah for me not uh, needed so that is not needed so simply what is this is example if you open your command prompt uh, same thing so in your command prompt right now i need to go to my uh, desktop so simply cd that is my desktop okay so how do uh, yesterday itself i showed you right so how do you run your python code so in example let's say in where is my created file my file right this is what i created right now okay so my file.py is what i created right now so i'll simply 
uh, cut this file. So where is cut? Okay, so I'll put it on D drive. I'll paste it over here. Copy, paste, uh, command prompt. Now simply Python space my file dot. So I got my hello world. So the same thing is what I'm getting over here. So D colon slash. Um, if you if even here, if I go for D and in my D, I want Python space my file dot py. And if I run this, I will get the same output. And it is also equal to running it simply in this play button. So that is what it is doing here. So in C uses Mithran desktop, my file dot py is got running over here. So it is this is nothing but your command terminal. So that in that command prompt only you're getting your output. So that file enter is not mandatory. Your Python code will recognize it. So Visual Studio code may require that uh, please install file enter for uh, debugging purposes. So that is not means if you want it, you can install or else it is completely fine. Okay, so now I have my file ready. So I don't how I know how I can run my code. So I will continue from our yesterday's topics one by one. So the first thing is today we will start learning with uh, conditional statements. So previously what uh, we have written code, so example, so yes, so previously we have written code. If I say simply print hello world and on the next line, if I say print hi. So if I run this code and uh, if I click on the play button, so you can see I'm getting these both lines in my output. So I'm getting a hello world and also I'm getting hi, but I don't want this. Suppose I want this hello world only to be printing based on a condition. I want only this high statement to be printing based on a condition so that we can achieve by using this if and else. So it is similar to other programming languages. Very, very simple. So let's see what is this if and else is. So Python uses if and else to choose between choices. It is called as a decision statement. So what is a decision statement? Example, uh, let's say we have, okay. Um, one second, someone has muted the voice. I'm getting some noise. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, so someone, uh, sorry, okay. So if and else, it is called as a decision statement. So what does a decision statement is? So simply, I, uh, I have, I'll have multiple choices. Example, in our exams, we'll have MCQ questions. What is an MCQ question? In MCQ question, out of four choices, you will choose any one choice. So that is, okay, so one second. Manage participants. What does this mean? Mute. Okay, so in MCQ questions, you will have uh, four or five choices. In out of four choices, what we will do, we will pick any one choice and we will be using it. So that is okay. So we will be two, uh, means, okay, yeah, out of four choices, we'll be selecting only one. Same statement, if and else. So if you give even four or five choices, any one choice will be working. So how do I use this if and else? So let's see some example. So for example, I'm going to use the first statement. So I'll use if and else is the first topic. So, okay, so let's start. I'm going to start with A is equal to 10. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm storing the value 10 inside. And the first statement, if A value is greater than 10. So I'm writing this condition. So what does this is? This is the if is a keyword. After this keyword, I'm giving a simple condition. We have seen this in our yesterday's topic, a comparison operator. We know that this will compare and it will say whether true or false. Okay, so if A is greater than 10, so I'll give a colon. So after giving a colon, if I press enter, you can see automatically my line is starting from, and it is not starting from the first, it is, it is starting with a gap here. So what is this gap over here? So that gap is called as indentation. I'll talk about what is indentation right now, just uh, bear with me, I'll complete my code. So I'll say print a value is bigger than 10. Okay, done. So on the next line, I'll simply say else statement. So if a is greater than 10, print a is bigger than 10. Else, if not, if, if a value is not greater than 10, I'm going to say print a is smaller or equal to 10. Okay, so this is my condition. So now I have two choices. The first choice is I'm checking whether my a value is greater than 10. So if my a value is greater than 10, I'll get a is bigger than 10. Suppose if it is not greater than 10, I'll get print a is smaller or equal to 10. So let's see my output. So now let's run this code. So simply click on that button. Now I'm getting an output of a is smaller or equal to 10. How? So 10 value is substituted over here. So 10 is greater than 10. So we know that it is false. So because they are same numbers. Okay. So that is why it is going to the, since this condition became false. So, 
So since this condition became false, it went to the else statement and it is printing a is smaller or equal to 10. Even though I have two print statement in my code, out of two print statement, only one print statement is coming in my output. So now let's see what happens if I change my value. So I'm changing my a value as 100. So now 100 is greater than 10. Yeah, it is true. So it will print print a is bigger than 10. So if I check this code, I'm getting yeah, a is bigger than 10. So out of two choices, any one choice is working. This is a simple example of what is if and else is. So here, okay. So now we have seen what is if and else. But what is this gap here? Is this mandatory? Why should I give this gap? So if I remove this gap and if I run this code, will it work? So if I run this, no, I'm getting an error. Intent is an error, expected an intent block. Okay, so what is that intent is? How do I give an intent? So always remember, you should not use space. One, two, three, four, five, space. This is completely wrong. You should always use the tab button. If you click one tab, so it is equal to one intent. So what is this tab button? So why should I give this intentation? So if you have experience in other programming languages, in other programming language, similar to like example in the, uh, I'll have my uh, yeah, PowerPoint in that I have an example of C and C++, right? So here we have these curly brackets. In Python, we don't have these curly brackets. So that is why we have this feature of intentation. Okay, so what is this intentation? How does it work? How does it differ from C and C++? If you don't know C and C++, that is fine because I'm going to teach you what is this intentation means. So simply under my if condition, I'm going to write even a little bit extra lines of code. So print, uh, I'm going to write hi. And also I'm going to write here print world some random uh, statements. So, uh, okay. And here I'm going to give an intent. I'm going to write print, uh, hello. And here I'm going to write this line works. Okay. Done. So now uh, I have uh, if and else same two conditions out of two conditions, any one condition is going to work. That means out of two choices, any one choice is going to work. So what is, what are my choices? The first choice is a is greater than 10. So it is checking. So if the condition is true, I will get my output of these three lines. So if my a value is greater than 10, I'll get my output of these three lines. So if I, let's see if I run this code, if I run this code, yeah, I'm getting these three lines in my output. These three lines is not coming in my output over here. So if I change my a value, so if I change my a value to smaller number, that is one. So now one is greater than 10, it is false. So it will go to the else statement and it will print a is smaller or equal to 10 and I'll get these lines as my output. So if I run this, you can see smaller or equal to 10, hello, and this line works. So out of these three lines or these three lines, so that are my two choices. Out of these three lines, either this choice or this choice. So based on this one condition, it is going to work. To give this uh, choices only, I am using this intendation. So to give even more example of intendation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this intendation. Okay, I'm, I've removed this intendation. So now let's see what happens. So now under my if family, so on, that is under my if I have three lines of coding under my else, I have only two lines of code. So hereafter this print statement does not belong to the else part. So my options are either the first option is these three lines. The second option is these two lines. This print statement 175th line does not care about what if and else is doing. So I'll come from the start again. So I'll give my a value as hundred. So now it will check hundred is greater than 10. Yeah, it is true. So it is, since it is true, I'm going to get these three lines in my output. So let's see if I run this, yeah, I'm getting these three lines in my output, but you can also see here print this line works is also coming in my output over here. Okay. So because this statement 175th line hereafter does not care what if and else is doing, it will always get executed. So let's see an example. If I make my a value as one again, so if I run this code, so now my choice, this condition becomes false. So it goes to the else statement and it will print a is smaller or equal to 10 print. Hello. Okay. I'm getting those two lines and also I'll get this line work. So here after this 177th line does not care what if and else is doing. So, uh, sir, I'm a little bit even feeling uh, discomfort. I can't understand this topic. So that is the main reason why I changed my IDE. So that is, I'm moving on to Visual Studio Code, right? So why did I move on to Visual Studio Code? Because now we have this feature called as this. So run with a bug symbol. So what is this meaning is now we can run with debugging mode. So what is debugging mode is? So if I run this code example, if I click on play button in a fraction of a second, I'm getting these three lines in my output. Okay. So even if I change my value and if I give, if I run this code in a fraction of a second, I'm getting these four lines as my output, but I don't want this. I want to visually see how this code is working step by step. 
so that is why we have this feature of debugging okay so what is run and debug so what is this feature if i click on this button so let's see that so simply uh, before running this run and debug so if you go before this line number you can see i'm getting a red dot so what is this red dot is this red dot is called as breakpoint so if i if uh, my program is starting from the a equal to 100 even though i have so many pro uh, so many lines of program be previously so all those are in commands so comments so my program is starting from this 167th line so what you are supposed to do is the first step is go before this line number you will automatically get this red dot okay so so simply click on that red dot. So if I click on that red dot, you can see that the red became final. So if you hover over the mouse, you are seeing that it is a breakpoint. Okay, so what is this breakpoint? So how do I, what is the usage of this? After giving a breakpoint, click simply click on this button, run and debug. Okay, so let me click on that button. So it is asking me, so what do I want to run and debug? So currently I want to run this Python file. Suppose if you are an uh, advanced user, you know how to use Django, Flask and Primer. So right now we are just learning Python. So I'll use, I'm just, I want to debug this Python file. So click on that. Okay, done. So if you wait for a second, it will load something. So it is loading over here and everything is done. So you can see so many, I got so many things over here. So I'm getting these things. So you won't be getting this Sim simply. I'll, re I'll say remove all expressions. You will understand this part. What is worth explaining? Okay. So right now you are getting this yellow colored line. So what is this yellow colored line? And also automatically you will get these buttons. So what are they, what are those buttons and what is this yellow colored line means? So simply I'll get, I'll click on the first button here. So I'll talk about this first button called as step into. So what to step into is so go one line so just execute this one line so right now this 167th line is not yet executed by the interpreter so now this yellow color line means that it is the interpreter so now if i click on this button you can see here a is 100 so it, now it got into the memory so now we are going to visually see how this code is going to work step by step okay so next step so if i click on this uh, step into it moved to the one line okay so this is my next line over here so now i have a condition if a is greater than 10 so i don't know whether it is true or false so that is where this watch expression comes under so simply click on this add expression button okay so now expression to watch so here type a is greater than 10 press enter you can see okay it is true so now we know that the if condition is true so if i click on the step into button it will go into this if condition so if i click on it you can see and now it is inside this 169th line print a is bigger than 10 so this is the out this is the place where we are going to get output what's over here if i click on this button print a is bigger than 10 so i'll get your output here so if i click step into i got my output a is bigger than 10 so next i have print high if i click on it i got my output high so if i print word if i click on it I'll get my output world. But we know that if and else is like a decision statement, either the first three lines or the next two lines. So if I click on this button, see here, this yellow color line moves directly to 176th line. So if I click on this, see here, it is directly jumping to 176th line. So that's because if and else is two choices. It is, we are, since we are choosing the first choice, it will not bother, it will not go and look inside what else statement is doing. So simply it will jump out of this if and else condition. So, and finally I have print this line works. If I click on this, I'm getting this line works and automatically everything will stop because the program is over. So this is the feature of debugging. Where whatever the program you're learning, even if it is a hard program, if it is a big program, or else if you're developing an application, all those things can be uh, checked with this debugging feature. If something is going wrong, I don't know what is going wrong. So that is where this debugging feature comes and helps under. We can visually see each and every line step by step what, what is happening. So this is a very simple example of if and else condition. So I have two choices out of two choices, any one choice is going to work. So simply I'm going to modify this if and else con uh, statement. I'm going to add one more keyword called as elif. So I'll go back to my topic, if and elf. So I have, I'll add one more keyword called as elif. So here small i, so here also small e. So that is spelling mistake. Okay, so Python is case sensitive language. So ELIF, okay, so what is this ELIF? So right now I have two choices, either the first choice or the second choice. So now this is like uh, MCQ question with only two choices. What if I want to include four or five more choices? I want even more choices. So that is what ELIF comes under. So if I type ELIF, A is double equal to 10, colon, press next line, print A is equal to 10. A is EQ, UAL. Okay, sorry. okay, so A is smaller than 10. So now, right now, 
i have my if condition so in in here i have three choices so out of these three choices any one choice is going to work so how it is checked based on your condition you are giving and also remember always if and else condition start with at the top you will have if condition in between you can have elif 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 at the finally you can ha have else or also you can use here elif a is less than 10 so if you are using an elif statement you have to definitely give a condition over here if you are not using an elif statement if you are using an else statement after this else statement you should not write something like this this will throw an error so after else no condition if you are using elif compulsory you have to give a condition that means either true or false whatever the condition is based on okay so now i have these simple if and else statement so now let's see it is similar to sim switch case yes almost similar to switch case but yep so it is almost similar in python we don't have switch cases so that is why we have this feature yep okay so a is uh, equal to 100 so now same i want let's see this output different scenarios so right now my a value is 100 so i have this breakpoint so let me uh, simply run and debug. So here you'll get this. So if I click on that button, I have this feature of run and debug. So click on that Python file. I'll go as fast as possible because we know all these things. So A is equal to 100. So here right now in my variables, in my topic variables, I don't have any variables after clicking this one button, step into. So you don't have to worry about this. Even if you're using uh, Spider, Anagonda, NetBeans, PySum, in all those IDE, the same feature, the same buttons, the same topics, watch expression and variables. So nothing will differ. So step into, click on that. You can see a value 100 is now in your variables. Now I also got a is greater than 10 as true. So if I click on it, so if condition is true, it will print a is bigger than 10. So I'll get my output over here. If I click on it, I'm getting this output a is bigger than 10. Okay. So next statement, if I click on the next button, you can see that it is ignoring the elif part. It is ignoring the else part. It will directly jump, jump to the final line. Print this line works. And if I click on that button, my program is over. So now let's change my value. If I change my value as minus one. Okay. So now let's run the same program. So a is minus one. Okay. So uh, someone talked something. I didn't hear you. Okay. A is equal to minus one. So if I, let's say, if I run this minus one as goes into the memory, a is greater than 10. It is false. So let's what happens if this condition is false. It will go and check the next condition. L if a is double equal to 10. I don't know whether this condition is true or false. So I'll ask the add expression a is double equal to 10. Enter. That is also false. If I click on this button. So after if can you uh, can Q use another if? Uh, no. Uh, example. Uh, you can use if inside a if. I'll I'll show you that example. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'll show you that example. Okay, LF A is double equal to 10. That is false. So if I click on this button, so it is going to the L statement, print A is smaller than 10. So now I'll get my output A is smaller than 10. And finally, this line works. So this is a very simple example of if LF and else. So you can you include even more, one more LF, uh, one more LF and also give one more condition A is not equal to 10 or something. So whatever the conditions you want and also one more print statement. So 10 or 15 or if LF, 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 it is your choice. So you can use as much as possible. Okay, so this is simple example of what is if if elif and else is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you and uh, just I'm going to even modify this code. So that means under my if statement, I'm going to create one more if here. I'm going to type if a is greater than 20 colon print a is also bigger than 20. So this is also possible. So what this meaning is under my if statement, I have one another if condition. So under my if, I have three lines of code. Under my elif, I have one line of code. Under my else, I have one line of code. But if you see this if statement, under this if, I have three lines of code. Inside these three lines, again, I have an if condition. So this is stock example of nested if. So N-E-S-T-E-D, nested if. If inside an if. So this is called as a nested if condition. Okay, so what is this nested if statement? So what does this mean? So simply, let's see the same example, a same scenario. So I'll give an example of 15. So run and debug Python file. So uh, as fast as possible. So, okay. So first go into, go into the memory. I got 15. A is greater than 10. The condition is true. So it goes inside this. Okay. Print A is bigger than 10. So I'll get my output over here. A is bigger than 10. So now it is checking another condition. A is greater than 20. So I'll add that expression. A is greater than 20. Enter false. So now since this condition is false, it won't bother what this line is doing. So simply it will directly jump to the 178th line. So print this line works. And finally, I'm getting this output, two lines of output and done. 
So what happens if I change my A value to 25, run and debug Python file. So simply I should get A25 goes into my memory. Yeah, so it goes into my memory greater than 10, true. So print A is bigger than 10, I'll get my output. A is greater than 20, that is also true. So now print A is also bigger than 20. Okay, so directly it comes to this line works. So this is a simple example of what is if condition is so nested if condition. So you can even combine one more if condition A is greater than 20, 30 colon enter. So now we can also write one more print statement. So I'll give you a shortcut. So where this intendation comes. So just remember after a colon, uh, that is a syntax, you have to compulsory like, like this. After a colon, automatically you will get an intent. The, you don't have to worry about it. So automatically the Visual Studio code will help to manage this intendation. Even if you're not giving a correct intendation, it will throw in, it will say that you're not giving a correct intendation. So I'll write something like this and I'll go, I'll save here. So yeah, so you can see here, I'm not running the program. So simply it is saying that, so it, it the intendation is something wrong. So I'm getting this under squiggy lines. Okay, so if I simply click on this and save this button, that red line will go. I'm not running the program. Simply I'm typing and saving the file. It itself saying me, that you're doing some mistake. So that is the feature of intelligence. Don't worry about that. Okay, so we have seen what is if condition, what is else, what is else. So simple decision statement, out of three or four choices, any one choice is going to work. So, okay, so this is simple example of nested if. So most people, are we okay, so this is, okay, why, where will I use nested if? So yesterday I've shown an example, if I want to open multiple files, so this is where I will use if, uh, after if condition, I'll write the command for opening the file. I'll use the logical operator and I'll run next. I'll write another command for opening the second file. If both the files are open and I'll use the logical operator and in between. So if both the files are opening perfectly only, I'll the if condition will be true. Next, it will go inside and execute the whatever the lines I'm typing. So mostly, uh, I can show you some examples of condition, but right now I don't have the time to give you. And I'll also give you a website where you can practice more if statement, more uh, looping statement. I'll, also, I'll give you the, all those stuff at the end of our session. Right now, since we are learning, right? And if you have any doubts in the future, you, are, you can feel free to ask me anytime. You can ask, get my number from Kartik. So don't worry about that also. So next, we will start learning about loops. Okay, what is uh, loops? So simple example. So let's say I'm telling you a program to print numbers from one to hundred. Okay, so how can I do that up to now with my knowledge? How can I do? So simple step one, print one, comma two, comma three, four, five, six, seven. So can we use if statement and a statement inside a single loop? Yes, you can use it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I run this statement, so I'll 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 show those I'll show those examples after completing a looping statement. Right now, since nobody knows loop, uh, when I'm teaching you loops, I'll give you examples. So right now I'm saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I run this uh, uh, simply, I, let's say I want print from up to hundred. So eight, nine, ten. I can't keep on typing, right? So that is a tedious process. So that is where we have the stopping of looping statements. So what is looping? So we have two loops, while loop and for loop. In other programming languages, we'll have while, do, while, for. But in Python, uh, forget about those stuff. It is completely different. So in while loop, it is mainly used for numbers. For loop is mainly used for a string, a list, or a tuple. So I'll, I'll see examples. So let's start with while loop. Okay, so what is an example of while loop? So simply, same example. I'll create a variable a is equal to 10. On the next line, I'll create while. So after this while, I'm going to give a condition. What is my condition? A value is less than five. Okay, so I'll give my A value as one. A value is less than five, colon. So we know that after a colon, automatically I'll get an intent. So if I click on this, yes, I'm getting an intent. Okay, so what I'm going to write here. So simply I'll write a condition, print A value. Okay, done. So on the next line, I'm going to write one more statement. A plus equal to one. So this is a, uh, this, this I'm covered in uh, assignment operators. What is this plus equal to? It is going to expand like a formula. So for right now, I'm going to write the whole formula a is equal to a plus one. So, but most of the people will use that shortcut a plus equal to one. So right now I'm just using the full form a is equal to a plus one and done. My loop is ready. And here I'll write uh, last line print loop over uh, L O O P O V E R. Okay. So uh, just five lines of code, my looping, a simple example of while loop is ready. Okay, so let's see what is what is this while loop and how it works. So uh, simply give a breakpoint, run and, okay, so instead of giving a breakpoint, I'll directly press the play button and see what is the output. And you can see my output is one, two, three, four, and loop over. 
how am I getting this output? So how did I get this in a fraction of a second? I'm getting one, two, three, four. So how am I getting this one, two, and three, four? So how this code is working? So same, we can use debugging feature to visually see how this code is working. Okay, so same. So give a breakpoint, use the run and debug button, automatically it will start everything for me. So right now I have these expressions that are previous code as examples. I'll simply click remove all expression. It will remove all the expressions. Okay, fine. So we have a fresh page. So step one, click on step into a value goes inside the memory. So next I have a condition a is less than five. So if I click on add expression, a is less than five. Enter. Yeah, the condition is true. So what the condition is true. So what happens if the condition is true? It goes inside the loop. So now it goes inside and print my a value. So now he, I got my a value as one. So I got my a value over here. So next I have a uh, statement over here. A is equal to a plus one. So we, the current value of a is one. So here I'll get the value one, one plus one, I'll get two. So a is equal to two. So now my a value is going to change to two. If I click on the button and you can see here, a value is going to true click button. So a value changed to two. So now again, now after this line, you can see here, it is directly going to the top line. So now why it is going again back to the 184th line because these two lines is under a loop. So we are talking about the topic of loops. So loop means these two lines is going to execute again and again and again and again until this condition becomes false. So right now this condition is true. So it goes inside, print my two value, a equal to a plus one, my a value will become three. So if I click on it, a value is becoming three. Now it will check again, condition is true, print my three value, a value will become four. Check again, condition is still true print my four value, a value will become five. So five is less than five. We can see here the condition is false. So it will simply come out of the loop. So that means it will go to the 187th line. So if I click here, I'm getting this output loop over. So if I click on this button, I'm getting the output loop over and this is my output. So this is how while loop is working. So simply looping means, so here, whatever the condition is you're giving. So based on this condition only, this particular two lines. So how am I saying this two lines is under the loop? based on this intendation. So since these two lines is under intendation, so these two lines belongs to the while family. Okay, so now I have these two lines under my intendation. So to explain even while loops better, we have two more things. So that is we have two more keywords, which is break and continue. So what is break and continue? Break means stop the loop. Okay, what is continue means? Continue means go back to the top of the loop. So let's see an example. So previously I've shown an example of if condition. So now I'm going to use if statement inside a while loop. So how, so simply after this print a enter, if my a value is double equal to three, I'm using double equal to because I'm going to compare. So we have, it's an example of comparison operator. I'm going to give a colon. We know that it's a syntax starting keyword. If give a comparison operator or anything. So after give a colon, press enter automatically, it will give an intendation. So now here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a simple statement as break because break is one of the keywords. Okay. So what does this break do? Let's see the same example. Now let's see the output. So same run and debug. It's a Python file. So yeah, everything is running. So, okay. So a value goes into my memory. So right now there is no a value over here. So if I click on step into a goes into my memory. Okay. Done. So a less than equal to five condition is true. Go, go to the next line, print a value. I should get my output over here. So if I click on it, I'm getting the output. A is double equal to three. I don't know whether this is true or false. So add an expression. So here A is double equal to three. Enter. Yeah, it is coming at as false. So if I click on the step into button, so it will simply go to the 188th line. 187th line is not reading. Why? Because my if condition is false. You can see here A double equal to three is false. So it is directly jumping to the 188th line. A is equal to A plus one. So now my A value becomes two. Go back to the top. Check the condition. True go inside, print my a value, which is here two. Okay. Done. A is double equal to three. Still it is false. So it will directly jump to the 88 line. So it is coming to here. A value will become three. Go back to the top and check the condition. Condition is true. Print a. So it is going to print three. My, if a is double equal to three, you can see here right now, my condition became true. Okay. So go inside. Now it is reading the word break for the first time. So what is the job of the break? simply stop the loop. It won't stop the program. It will stop the loop. Okay. So what is stop the loop? If I click on this button, the loop is over. So here after simply, you can see here, it comes out of the loop. It is coming to the 89th line loop over. So if I click on it, you can see the output loop over and my loop is done. Even though my A is less than five, the condition is still true. Break statement means simply stop the loop or come out of the loop. 
So that is the example of break statement is we have one more example, which is continue. So continue means go back to the top of my loop. So let's see what is the top of my loop with an example. So simply I'll change this break statement to continue. Okay, done. The same example, run and debug Python file. So a value is so right now a value is not in my memory. So if I click a value goes into my memory condition is true. We can see here from the example true print a. So I'll get my output one here uh, false. Okay, jump a value equal to a plus one a value will become two over here. Okay, done. So condition is still true print uh, two condition is false jump a value become three go back to the top. Now condition is true. Okay, print three. Okay. So condition a double a equal to three. So a double equal to three. That is also true. So now it goes inside the if condition. It is reading the word continue for the first time. Okay. So what does continue means? So simply continue means go back to the top of my loop. So let's see. So if I click on if I click on the step into button, what is the top of my loop? 184th line is the top of my loop. So this is where my loop is starting. So if I click on this, it will simply go to the top of my loop. Okay. So what is the I got went to my stop top of my loop. A is less than five. So a value is three less than five. Condition is true. Okay. Print three again. Okay. Condition still true. Okay. Continue. Continue means go back to the top. So I'll go back to my 184th line. So true print three true continue. So what happened now is now we are stuck in an infinite looping. So I'm pressing this button again and again. So instead of this, you can simply press this uh, play button. Top of the loop means it means go to the if. Now if statement is just a uh, condition. So loop uh, loop is while is the loop, right? So it will go to the top of the loop. So with this while statement, if it's not a loop, if it's a condition statement, the loop is while. So continue means simply go to the while only. Okay. So uh, now if I am clicking this step into button, so that means I'm each and every time I have to click. So now I'm going to talk about one more button called as play or continue. So simply if I click on this play button, so hereafter the program will start executing. So if I click on it, you can see three, 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 as fast as possible. My computer memory is going to fill with three. So if you leave this program for two or three minutes after some time, it will start hanging. So your computer will crash. So how do I stop this? So even if you close the terminal example, you have this close button. If you, even if you close this, even if you close the entire program also, it will continue. How do I stop this? One more important keyword control plus C. So if you press control plus C in Python, you have to remember this control plus C it is called as keyboard interrupt. So that means whatever the program it is running or if the, if you are doing some calculation, it is taking more time or if you are trying to connect to the database, it is taking more time. So simply press control plus C it will stop my while loop. So this is an example of uh, uh, if something is going wrong. I have to stop my Python program. So you have to simply press control plus C uh, shortcut for copy. Okay. So now we have successfully seen an example of while loop. So while loop is mainly used for numbers. Okay. So what is a different example? So next we are going to learn about for loop. So what is example of for loop? So for loop is mainly used for string. Okay. Next list. Okay. Next pupil. Okay. So we have seen example of what is string and list. Even ignore the pupil part. So mostly for strings and pupil. So let's see an example of for loop for numbers while loop for string and list uh, for loop. Okay. So let's see an example. So creating of a for loop is very, very easy. So for loop is made, uh, simply two lines. So first the keyword for next a variable, any variable name, whatever you want X. So for X in, so this in keyword is mandatory. So this is like a considered like a syntax syntax means this is how you should create a for loop. So for compulsory X, your choice X, A, B, C, D, anything, your variable name. So I'll create a in is compulsory mandatory. So for a in, so here, I'm going to give an example of a string. So I'll going to give double quote. Hello world. So we know that anything inside a double quote or a single quote is called as a string. Okay. For a in hello world, give a colon. So after a colon, we know that automatically it will come to the next line. Okay. Done. And if I say print a value, so done, my loop is ready. So just simple two lines, my for loop is ready. So we know that what is in operator is yesterday at the end of my session, I told you what is an example of winners. If I go back, let's see an example of in dicta set identity operator membership. Okay. So here, so I gave an example of in membership operator is in. So I told an uh, word it traverses and checks. So what is traverses means it will go each and every element one by one and it will check whether the element is inside or not. So that is what I gave an example of in symbol is the same thing we are using an in symbol over here. 
so for a in hello world okay so what is this in means so simply in operator is going to traverse and check what is traverse and check so simply first character h will be stored inside a next character e will be stored inside a so if you to prove this simply i'll give a breakpoint run and debug anything in python can be used by using this debugging feature so we can visually see what's going on wrong so for a so simply i'll add one expression which is a enter i want to see what is a is right now i'm getting a name error called as a is not defined because the uh, the program is not yet running so the first step step into okay so now you can see here in my a value i have my element first character in a string h now h is stored inside my a so print a now i'll get my output as h okay done next character e e will be stored here if i click on step into e is getting stored print e next character l print l next character l print l next character o print o so next white space character so likewise each and every character in a string will be stored in your uh, variable whatever the variable your name you are giving and finally after the end so your this is your output hello world okay so this is a simple example of for loop so for loop can be mainly used for a string what if i want to use it inside a list we know how to create a list by using square bracket so the same example i'll tweak it a little bit i'll put a square bracket okay i'll give some elements in between 1 comma 2.44 comma uh, hello world comma next false so some four examples of four data types integer float string and boolean okay the same example let's run so what happened in a string is it stored each and every character that's why you're getting each and every character one by one but now i gave an example of a list for a in i'm giving an example of a list so let's see what happens so now the first element in string first character in a list first element there is a difference so a is stored in my uh, so the first element one is stored inside my a okay print that one what is my next 2.44 that will be stored inside my a okay print that 2.44 here okay done so next i have my string so the entire string will be stored inside my a see here yeah the entire hello world and print my hello world next false and finally false over suppose if you are giving an example of string it will think it as each and every character suppose if you are giving an example of a list it will take each and every element so this is a simple example of for loop so for loop is mainly used for string list and tuple while loop is mainly used for numbers we can't use while loop for strings and list okay but for loop as an advantage that means you can also use for loop for numbers there is a way how so we need the help of a function so what is a function we have seen so we have seen some examples of function so what examples of function so uh, print that is a function it is used to print to the output screen and input we have seen yesterday so what is what is the job of input it is used to get something from the user okay so next we have seen some type casting functions int float so we have seen some examples of type casting functions so these are all used uh, predefined function that is these functions are developed by the python developers likewise the same we are going to use one more function called as range r a n g e so if you want to use for loop with numbers we need the help of this range function how let's see an examples same for your variable x in is mandatory okay so here instead of giving a string or a list i'm going to use this word r a n g e open and close parenthesis colon okay after a colon automatically an indentation print my x value okay done so for x in range okay so this is a function so print my x value so here x that is why i'm also giving here a for a here here also i'm getting giving that a value over here so that is mandatory so for x in range okay what is my range value suppose if i'm giving my range as 10 so i'll increase my terminal window so little bit i'll come down i'll run this code if i click on run this code you can see i'm getting my output of 0 to 9 okay so if you give a range of 10 it means you will get an output of 0 to 9 okay so by default if you give one input of 10 it will come from 0 to 9 okay so what if i give two inputs 10 comma 24 okay so now this means starting from 10 up to 24 or not 24 up to 23 okay now if i run this you can see starting from 10 up to 23 i'm getting the output suppose if you are giving two inputs what if i give one more input so sorry comma 2 10 comma 24 comma 2 so this means starting to the starting from 10 ending up to 23 but jump two values so what is jump two means so after 10 i'll get 12 so same thing if i run this code 10 12 14 16 18 20 and 23 you can give even jump three 
it will get jumping of 3 3 values 10 13 16 19 and 22 so this is an example if you want to use for loop for range function so mostly while loop is for numbers for loop for string list and tuple but there is a way of using for loop for numbers by using this range function but uh, it is up to your choice most people will use while loop for numbers and for loop for strings and list they will be specifically because you will have more control over in while loop so example if i come down you will have more control over while loop so what how should it increment where it should start all those things will you will control over while loop in for loop it is very straightforward so simple two lines but there is also some people who will be using this for loop also so simple examples of for this for and what is while loop okay so we have seen examples of for while and uh, example of if condition else statement elif and what are they so we are going to start moving into one of the most important topics in python which is what is a function is we have seen conditional statement we have seen uh, looping statements they are simply so example what where is the use case of loops what is the use case of if if and else so there is no, mostly no use cases when you are working with as a python developer only these are used when you when you have to clear an interview even though I, if i go and say if i'm trying to move to a different con, uh, company if i'm saying i know i have some experience in django they will definitely ask me questions from python if you want to clear those questions in python it will be mostly in for loops and while statement and if and else conditions only so that is that is where that is why we are learning for loop and while loop if you ask me whether will i use these for loop and while loop and working no mostly there are less rare cases mostly i'll be using a packages what is a packages what is a library we will be we will be learning those stuff I, i'll tell you what, what is actually happening in those packages but right now we are learning the basics and the fundamentals for clearing an interview so that is my perspective okay so we have seen what is if else what is for loop what is while loop so next we are going to learn one more important topic called as functions so what is a function we have used print range input uh, type casting functions example where are you okay so type casting functions examples yep int float string boolean list tuple set so these are all type casting functions so we have learned about what is function and how they are working so next now we are going to learn in depth about how to create your own functions so what is a function is what is this function name so i've given you i told you a shortcut so any word if it is ending with open and close parenthesis just name it as a function this is the shortcut i've told you yesterday okay so now we are going to learn in depth about what is this function so what is this meaning how do we use a function okay so now to create a function you have to use this def def keyword okay def next space what function do i want to create so simply give any name you want so my first uh, first function so this is the name i'm giving give open and close parenthesis colon okay after this colon inside what i'm going to type simply i'm going to type a statement uh, hello first function okay so what is a function is let's go and read the definition function or method in java people will call this function the same topic of function as method that is why two names function and method they are both same ditto same to same so but two different names a function or method is a block of code which only runs when it is called so function is a block of code which only runs when it is called this is the definition of a function okay so what is this block of code which only runs when it is called so what is only runs okay so let's see the output so you have successfully created a function keyword is def give any random name your choice open and close parenthesis colon so inside this colon i'm typing one line of code and if i run this i'm getting nothing so yeah okay if i run this again again i'm still i'm getting nothing so why am i not getting any output that is why that is a definition is is a block of code which only runs when it is called so how do i call a function okay so simply by using its name so what is the name of my function my first function is the name so simply i have to use my first function so it will auto fill it right so how do i auto fill it so simply after typing my press the tab button it will auto fill it whatever you are using so press the tab button it will auto fill it okay done so my first function open and close parenthesis so now if i run this code i'm getting the output of hello first function okay done so simply this is the declaration so where i'm creating a function code so this is the statement where i am calling the function okay so simple example of how to create a function and how to call a function okay so uh, inside this i'm going to write even more lines so print hi and print something uh, one two three okay done so if i don't have this line example if i remove this line and now if i run this code you may see i'm not getting any outputs run this code i'm not getting any outputs because even though i'm writing some print statement i'm creating something i'm not getting any outputs so how do i get output i have to 
call my function so how do i call my function by using the name i'm calling the function so i'm getting if i run this now you can see i'm getting three lines of output what if i call two times my first function again so now it is equal to getting the two lines of output again and again you can see here all these three lines so simply consider my first function as a box so what is a box now simply you have a box over there so inside that box you have these three lines of uh, statement so you are putting these three lines of statement inside that box so when you use that box it will simply get and execute all those three lines if you again use the box it will execute all those three statements again so that is why i'm getting this six lines of output so simply the function is used for reusability of the code suppose if i'm if i want to uh, simply i want to print these three statements again instead of writing it again two times i'll simply go i'll call my function i'll execute it now if i run this code i'll get my output out, out of six times you can see here run it so i'm getting 1 2 3 so six times i'm getting this output so this is a simple example of a function it's a block of code which only runs when it is called so that is what a function is so this is the step 1 the first step of creating a function step 1 okay so learning about what is a function okay done so next step can we print only particular line uh, can we print only particular line so mm, i i didn't understand this question print particular line in the sense uh, no so inside this function you can do anything any operations so right now i'm just giving an example of just a printing statement here i have five more steps in learning about functions so step 1 is just understanding of functions step 2 i'll i'll give more examples after completing entire functions if you still have that question ask me again i'll explain it first okay so step 2 is uh, okay so we have created a function so simple just an example of function okay so what is my step 2 remember in print statement same it is a function but who created this the python developers we are just reusing them so in this print statement in between we know that we are going to give some values 4 comma 1 2 3 comma 4 comma hi so if i give something like this and if i run this code you can see these three lines are getting in my output screen so we are giving some input likewise the same i'm going to use this code copy here paste here i'm going to print something i'm I'll leave it as empty so same i'll call my function my first function open and close parenthesis so in this parenthesis i'm also going to give something like this i'll copy here i'll paste it over here so now i'm going to give some values in my function so i'm going to pass some values here i'm not passing anything my inside my parenthesis it is empty so now i'm going to pass something so what is this how okay so i'm i'm passing simply two numbers 1 2 3 and 4 so to store these two numbers so two values i need to create x and y so it's just think it as two variables so 1 2 3 will go and store in x 4 will go and store in y on the next line i'll simply print my x and y values so x comma y and here i'll print uh, the values r comma x and y okay done so now if i run this code you can see i'm getting the values are 1 2 3 comma 4 so 1 2 3 will go to x and 4 will go to y so this is step 2 what is step 2 is function with arguments so what is arguments this x and y is here after not called as variables it is called as arguments so simply just a name nothing else nothing much different this 1 2 3 and 4 is called as parameters okay just a name don't worry about it so now we have created a function with arguments so if you pass 1 2 3 1 2 3 will go to x if you pass 4 4 will go to y okay still i have a problem what is the problem is i'll call my function again my first function inside that instead of passing two values i'm going to pass only one value which is 4 so now what will happen so i'll uh, if for confusion i erase this line so now i'm only sending one value 4 will go and store in x but for y i don't have anything so if i run this code you can see i'm getting an error so that means type error my first function is missing one positional argument which is y so it is missing a value for y i have to compulsory give a comma 6 or 7 So now, if I run this, the code will work perfectly fine. I have to compulsory give a value over here, or else my my own created function will throw an error. So how do I rectify this problem? So that is where we will learn in the step three. So which is function with default arguments. Okay. So function with default arguments. Here I have created a function with arguments. Here I am going to be create a function with default arguments. So what is a function with default arguments? I'll copy paste the same code. I'll put this code in comment. So now I know that uh, 
if i if i'm not passing a value if, I, if i'm passing only 4 4 will go and store in x so for y i don't have a value so i have a problem so I'll simply create default argument so what is my arguments x and y are my arguments okay so how do i make it default so simply put x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 so i'm giving some default value you can give any value hello hi or 10 or 20 you can give any default values so now hereafter even if I'm calling my function, even if I'm not passing anything, so simply it will take the default values x equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So I'll get the values are 0 and 0. So if I pass some value, my first function, if I pass one value which is high, so simply high will be stored in x. So it will replace the 0 and I'll get my x value as high. If I run this code, you can see the values are high. Since I'm not passing anything to y, it is taking the default 0. What happens if I pass two values, my first function, um, I'll pass one value as hello and I'll pass one value as comma 66 something. So now hello will go and store inside my x, 66 will go and store inside my y. Now if I run this code, I, I can get this, the values are hello and 66. Okay, now one more thing, I have a question. What if I want to pass value directly to y? I don't want to pass value to x, I want to pass directly to y. Example, if I pass hi, it is directly going and storing in x. That is why I'm getting the value of x here. What if I want to pass directly to y? That is also possible. So simply you have to give y is equal to uh, 77. Here I'm using y. That is why I'm also here using y. So y is equal to 77. So if I pass it like this, you can also directly pass it to the second variable. So second argument. So this is an example of function with default arguments. So by default, I'm giving a value. Even if the user is not passing anything, the function will take the default values and it will execute the program. So you can also write anything. So, so if I say the values are x and y, instead of values are x and y, I'll say the sum is x plus y. So now I, I'll, I can simply write a program to add two numbers. So I'll pass 66 here, I'll pass uh, four. So now if I run this code, so previously it is taking my x and y as zero and zero. So I'm getting my output as zero. So if I pass 66, I'll put this 0 plus 66. If I'm passing two values, 4 plus 66, I'm getting 70. If I'm passing only one value directly to y, simply again, 0 plus 77, I'll get 77. So this is also possible. You can do whatever you want with this x and y values. It is your choice. So here you can also use if condition. You can check whether the x value is greater than 0 or not. You can do whatever the operations you want. The simple examples of function with default values. Still, I have an error. What is this? So my first function, instead of giving 0, 1 or 2 inputs, I'm going to give uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to give so many inputs. Okay. So now let's see what happens if I run this code. You can see my first function takes 0 to 2 positional arguments. So that means you can give 0 or 1 or 2. So from 0 to 2 positional argument, but 7 were given. Okay. So that is the error I'm getting. So I'm giving extra values. So 7 extra values. So how do I rectify that? So that we'll learn in the step four. So what is my step four is when, if, when you don't know how many values the user is going to pass, there are so many values the user is going to pass. Even if the user is passing 100 values also. So similar to print statement. In print statement, we can pass an example. I'll give an example before that I'll put a comment. So remember print statement. In print statement, you can use one, uh, comma, two, three, four, five, six. You can give 100 values also. It will, simp it will work. So if I run this, see, it is working. Even if I give comma, uh, six comma six something. So still it will work. So I'm getting, I'm getting it without any errors, but this is also a function. This is developed by the Python developers. I want to create a function similar to like this. So hereafter, even if the user is giving 10 values or 20 values, my function should work. So how do I create something like that? So I'll simply copy paste this code, copy my first function. So instead of creating X comma Y, I'm going to I'll erase all this extra unnecessary lines, erase all these lines. So erase all these things. Okay, so I have an empty function, def my first function. So inside here, I'm going to write only one variable x. Okay, so one variable. So before this x, I'm going to give a star symbol. So what the star symbol means, so here after this x is called as a r b i t r e r y arbitrary argument. So what is an arbitrary argument? So arbitrary argument is used when the uh, developer does not know how many values the is going to pass to the function. So this is what an arbitrary argument is. If you hover over print statement, you can also see here, this is the definition of a print statement. You can see the first value, they are using the star symbol, star values. So that means this is how the developers have created it. 
so even in this print statement you can pass 10 or n number of values the same i am going to create a function with star x so hereafter i'll here simply print my x statement okay my simple arbitrary argument step 4 is ready so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to call my function so here i'll not pass anything next i'm going to call my function i'm going to pass two values so next i'm going to pass my call my function i'm going to pass n number of values okay done so i'm passing so many values so now let's see what happens print x and also the type of x we have seen what is the type of x in yesterday's class so type is used to see identify what data type it is okay so now let's run this code and see the output okay so save plus this play button okay so now you can see here what it is doing is so arbitrary argument creates a tuple so t u p l e okay so arbitrary argument creates a tuple so tuple is ordered unchangeable allows duplicate members the three points to remember tuple is ordered unchangeable so what is unchangeable is you can't modify the values inside so if you are passing nothing so simply it will create an empty tuple if you are passing two values it will create a uh, two uh, values inside two table two uh, two values inside a tuple so next if you are passing n values it all the n values will be stored inside this uh, tuple so next how can i access the values you can use for i in uh, x and print my i value so any you can use a loop you can use anything you want so simply i'll remove all this now if i run this code you can see this this is the output so i'll come down run this code okay so step one print x and type of x so it is creating a tuple and the type is class tuple so next line i'm creating a simple for loop for i so this i is your choice so for is mandatory in this mandatory what is the x so x is a tuple so for x in tuple so in tuple each and every value will be stored inside my i so i'm printing each and every value one by one so you can do whatever the operations you want so that is for, that is your choice so simply we are creating a function with arbitrary argument so this is a simple example of what is a function is so function is simply used to uh, you can pass values to the function and this values you can use it or you can use a loop or you can use anything you want to do some operations in the past values so this is a simple example so what operation do i going to give example let's see uh, i'll say sum plus equal to uh, i okay so what is my sum value so simply i'll say sum is equal to zero and finally i'll print my sum okay i'm writing a simple code so what is my simple code is this simple code is for uh, addition of n values so if i example if i sorry if i pass uh, 3 comma 4 comma 5 so i want the addition of these three numbers 3 plus 4 plus 5 so if i run this code so simply i'm getting the output of 12 so even if I pass comma phi comma phi, so I want the addition of these five values. So if I run this code, so simply I'm getting the output of 22. How this code is working? So all these values are stored inside a tuple, which is x. So I'm creating a variable sum. So for i in x, so I'm using the symbol sum plus equal to i. I just want to add each and every values in the sum and I'm finally printing the sum. Even though if you're not understanding this code, so you need some experience in Python to solve some problem, mathematical problems. If, even if you're not understanding this perfectly fine, I'll give you the website where you can find uh, examples similar to this and you can practice also. So that is the best, best website out there. I'll tell you about that at the end of my session. Don't worry about it. So you will learn, definitely learn Python. So if you have interest in it, okay. So we have created a uh, simple step four. So what is a function? what is uh, a simple example of a function so what is our uh, uh, function with arguments what is function with default arguments so what is function with arbitrary argument and the final step is step five so function with return statement so after completing this all the difficult things in python is over R E T. Next, all the fun topics, example, what is library, how to connect to a library, how to connect to the uh, AWS stuff, and all those things. Okay, so we have step five, function with return statement. Okay, so what is function with return statement? So I'm going to create a function, def my function. Okay, so now inside this function, I'm going to say return. Okay, so why am I using this return statement is when I'm talking about the libraries. So uh, you need to have some understanding in this topic. So next topic, we'll cover the libraries and the, what is libraries and packages. So to understand that, we need to understand this function with return statement out of all the four topics is the important one. Okay, so what is this function with return statement? Def my function. So return. Okay, so what I'm going to return, I'm going to return 100. So if someone call my function, 
I'm going to return the value of 100. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? Let me call my function, my function. Okay, I'm calling the function. So when you call this function, if I run this code, see, you can see you won't get any output. Why you are getting any output is because there is no print statement in my code. Okay, so we will understand that part. So when you call a function, so what this will do is, so simply it is go and it will call the function. It will execute the line inside it, return 100. So what is return 100? Where will this 100 will get returned? So to understand that, I'll write an example. X is equal to my function. So I'll simply print X value. So I'm creating a variable X is equal to, I'm assigning to a function. So if, if X is equal to my function, so what will happen in this code is when you are calling the function, it will go inside, it will execute return 100. So this 100 value will get returned to this line. So here, this line will get erased and 100 will come and return over here. So X is equal to 100. And we know now we can understand this line. X is equal to 100 and print X means I said get my output as 100. So now I'll revert it back. I'll run this code. You can see I'm getting the output of 100. To, to explain this step even better, I'm going to create one more function. So that is def, uh, I'll name it as my function 2. Okay. So colon, so open and close parenthesis, colon, enter, return 50. Okay, done. So now I'm, I'm creating two functions, one with my function two name and another with my function name. So now I'm going to write X is equal to my function plus my function two. Okay, so this is the code I'm writing. So what will happen is when you call my function, so it will go and execute this line, return 100. So here this line will get erased and I'll get the answer as 100 over here. So when you call my function two, it will go and call that line return 50. So this line will get erased and I'll get my value 50 over here. 100 plus 50, we know it is 150. So now I'll revert it back. So now if I run this code, I should get the output of 150. Yeah, I'm getting the output of 150. So how this 150 is getting, this line will get replaced by 100. This line will get replaced by 50. And 100 plus 50, I'm getting 150. This is what function with return statement is. Okay, to, okay, so this is what a function with return statement. So I'll a little bit change it a little bit. I'll erase this function. So what happens if there is no return statement in a value? So I'm not, I'll simply say print uh, hi. Okay, so now let me run this code. So def my function uh, print hi. So now if I run this code, you can see you are getting the output of none. So first I'm calling the function go print hi statement. Okay, I've got my high value. Now I'm saying x value is equal to my function. So what is the x value? That is This function is not returning anything. So that is why you're getting this and none value. If the function does not have the return keyword inside it, it will simply return none. None is nothing but nothing. Suppose if you have return 50, now this 50 will be returned to this function call x is equal to 50 and print x, I'll get the 50 value. So previously I got none. Now I'm getting 50 value because return statement will simply return whatever the value you are typing here to the function calling. So this is what function with return statement is. Okay. So now we have successfully created our uh, functions. We have understood what is function, how to create a function. Now uh, we have completed what is what are functions. If you have any doubts, you can ask me or else we'll go on to the fun stuff. What is modules, packages, how to connect to a AWS. So uh, Asus, I don't know your name, sorry. You asked me a question, right? Can we print only one particular line? So is that uh, query to be understood it or still you have a doubt? What is instances plus means add and what instances plus means concatenation? Okay, so uh, example, if you try to add two numbers, so print 10 plus 20. So now if you run this, this 10 is an integer, this 20 is an integer. You can see here, if I over, hover my mouse, it will understand it as integer. So I'll get my output as 30. Okay. If you say print in double quote 10 plus in double quote 20. So this 10, you know that it is jump part, uh, jump part one again, please. Okay. So if you uh, hover this mouth example, I should get string. Okay. So if you add two integers, you will get uh, the number 30. If you try to add two numbers, uh, which is strings, it will simply concat those two things. So remember in input function, yesterday's topic in input, where is input? Input always recognizes the user input word as a string. So for example, if I say A is equal to input and B is equal to input, 
and print a plus b okay so now if i remove this line now if i run this code so simply a is equal to input i'm giving the first number 100 i'm giving the second number 25 so now according to my definition input always recognizes the user input word as a string so even though i'm giving 125 to my knowledge i'm thinking it as an integer but what python will understand is it will understand it as an a string so that is why it is simply concatting those two strings so it is our job to use the typecasting function input int and here also int so for string it will concatenate for integer it will normally add so that is the only two differences between uh, addition and concatenation so now if i run the same thing 100 and 25 i'll get 125 okay so done so next uh, let me revise those things. So jump part one again, please. So I'll revise from the start. Okay. So, so part one means step one, right? Or is it a different topic? No, only the jump, uh, uh, jump function. Uh, like uh, we pass three variable and uh, we have to. Uh, uh, this example, arbitrary argument. No, or a different topic itself. No, today uh, we studied one jump function, right? Uh, if uh, we have two variable and we are giving third, uh, passing the third one, yes. it jumps and uh, shows the output. I think it's continue. Uh, that seems right. Okay, so. Uh, in this topic for function inside for function here for loop this thing yes 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 okay. yes this one. okay uh, right so for loop is mainly used for string list and tuple but it is also can be used for numbers to use it for numbers we need the help of this range function okay so what is this range function what does it do is so simply it will accept three inputs. So similar to our coding. So here we have learned if you are passing nothing, if you're passing one value, two value, you can also pass n number of values. We have learned about what are functions. The same thing range is a predefined function, which is developed by the Python developers. So step one is simply I'm giving, so let's say I'm giving the input of five. So for X in, so this is mandatory. You have to definitely write like this is syntax. This X is your choice. Let's say I'm, I'll write E here. I'll also write e here. It is your choice. Okay. So this range function is what you are typing. So for e in range of five. So terminal, I'll write it over here. So now if I run this code, so if you are giving only one input, it will start from zero up to that five before that is four. So from zero to four, you will get your output. So if I, instead of five, if I give 15 from zero to 14, I'll get my output. So this is the example of range function is. So instead of giving only one value, we can also give two values. Example, 15 comma 25. So 15 will become start value and 25 will become end value because normally the output, it is always starting from zero. But let's say I don't want my numbers to be starting from zero. I want it to be starting from a particular number example. That is why you, have, you will give here two things. So starting is 15 and ending is 25. So now if I run this code, you can see starting from 15 up to not 25, but before that 24. Okay, so before the 25, I'm getting 24. So if I give 15 comma 30, starting from 15 up to 29. So this is range function. If you are giving only one value, that is if you are giving only one, this means zero to 14. If you are giving like this, 15 to 69. So example, let's say I'm giving 15 to 40. I'm also giving comma one more value. So which is start, stop and range. So which is if I give three. So consider this jump as three tables. So from 15, what is the next three values? 16, 17, and 18. I should get my next output as 18. So 15 after three numbers, 16, 17, 18. After three numbers, uh, 19, 20, 21. After three numbers, 22, 23, 24. So that is what this three becomes. So this is called as simply jump. So if I say five, so I want to jump five, five numbers. Now, if I run this, you can say 15. Next five number is 20. Okay, done. So this is a simple example of for loop, uh, your for loop with range function. and Still, any doubts in functions? Even, okay, so if you understood this last topic, that is more than enough. We can move on to our next thing, which is 
one of the important things in python libraries so what is a library so hereafter what i do is what most of the people do in, in uh, working people uh, working is we won't be writing um, many lines of code we'll be simply reusing the code so what is reusing the code what is modules and libraries so let's see all those examples right now okay so the last thing the easiest part so let me ask a simple question so i'll also answer that okay so we know the square root of 25 which is 5 pi into 5 is 25 the square root of 25 is 5 okay square root of 16 4 we know that that is easy what if i'm what if i'm asking the square root of 24 so square root of 24 without using a calculator if you can use pen and paper but still it will take some time because we don't know how to calculate the square root of 24 is okay so okay so what if i want to write a python program to find the square root of a number so okay i don't know how do i do it so that is where this topic comes under modules and libraries or packages three different words but all mean the same thing modules libraries packages okay what is modules libraries and packages so what are they if you go to google so let's open google and uh, if i search for an okay so why what happened fast is my internet slow no yes no. is my internet is slow so let's see okay so uh, if you go to google and if you search for python standard library okay it's fast so if you search for python standard library okay so you will get the first link python standard library 3.8.2 that is the latest version of python so if you open that okay so if you open that you can see here so i'll resume in a little bit so 130 150 okay so if you open this python standard library below here you have a list of libraries so even i don't know almost 80 to 70 percent of this list of libraries so what is this list so what is this so many things so for understanding purposes we'll choose any one so for the best example the easiest one is let's choose math so math mathematical functions so for step one search in google python standard library in this list of libraries i'm choosing one particular library called as math okay so let's open that fine fine so in this math library you can see here so this module provides the mathematical functions defined by c standard so uh, c is the first programming language in the in the c you have math library so even if you don't know c don't worry about that now i'm going to explain so after opening that math i'm choosing the math after opening that math still i have so many things okay so fab factorial floor f mod so now i know that i i asked a question square root of 25 answer is 5 what is the square root of 24 we don't know the answer because i don't know the formula how to calculate the square root of 24 so that is where this topic comes under so in this uh, math library i'm searching for one particular thing okay so math dot square root so returns the square root of x so simple as that so simply this is used to find the square root of a number so now we let's go to our code i'm going to write one code i m p o r t import so what do i want to import so import as a keyword what do i want to import i want to import math because that is the name of this file so exact m a t h so import math on the next line i'm going to say m a t h math dot so why am i using this dot is so this is the file name in that file name so if i use dot inside that file i have something called as sqrt square root okay press tab okay done so math dot square root so what do i want to find the square root of i want to find the square root of 24 so let's find the square root of 25 first okay so now let's go back so let's search for uh, where is okay so return the square root of x return okay you can see return 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 all the paragraph is starting with return whatever the topic is why it is saying why are they saying it has return so that is where we read the uh, previous topic that is functions with return statement so we have seen function with return similarly they are saying that how they have created this square root function how the python developers have created the square root function is so when you use this this line will get erased and the and, and the answer will be stored example if you say y is equal to so now this line will get erased and the answer of this will be come as like this so that line will get erased and the answer for the square root of 25 will be delete will be deleting this line and i'll be getting that value over here five so that is to say that only they are saying so example control z, z okay to say that only they are using this keyword 
returns. So when you use this function, it will simply return the square root of x. So x is nothing but whatever the value you are giving here. So it will simply return the value. So that is why we have to use this statement y is equal to math dot square root and I'll print that y value. So now if I run this code, I should get the output of phi. So yeah, I'm getting the output of phi. So if I use, if I want to find the square root of 24, I should get 4.898 something. Okay, so now I got the square root of 24, but I don't know the formula. I don't know how it is finding the square root of 24. So simply I have to remember there is a package or a module or a library called as math. So there are so many list of libraries. So we, can, we have seen so there is a n number and so many list of libraries. In this library, I'm choosing one li particular library called as math. Inside this math library, I have to remember that is, there is a package called as square root. So how did I find this? So by simply searching in Google, I want to find the square root of a number by using Python. So if you search that the uh, Google itself, someone will tell you the answer that there is a library called as math. So inside that library, you, you have this function called as square root by using this. So that is how people will learn. There are so many libraries. I'll talk about those stuff also. So right now math dot square root. So return the square root of X. Okay. So now we have understood a simple example of what is a library. So step one is learning about libraries. So I'll give you even one more example. Is it is equal to math dot factorial? Okay. So what is factorial in mathematics? So that is FAC factorial. So if I give factorial of five, that is nothing but one into two into three into four into five. So if I print Z, I should get the factorial of five, which should be uh, 120. So if I run this, I get the factorial of five. So instead of writing the code, how to find the factorial of a number, I have to remember that there's a package called as math and math dot factorial. Okay. So I'm talking in complicated terms. What is math? It is a package. It is a library. So what is that library? So I don't know. I have zero idea of what is a library. To understand stuff better, to understand this library topic better, what we are going to do is we are going to create our own library. So how do I create a own library? Okay. So step one. So simply I'll go to file, new file. Okay. So I'll save it. So what do I want to save it and where do I want to save it? I'll simply save it in my uh, D drive. Okay. So I'll create a new folder. So inside this new folder, I'll create a library. I'll create a file. What nothing but a Python file. So what is my file name is my own L I B R A R Y. So my own library dot P Y. So this is the file name I'm creating. So it is inside D new folder. Okay. My own library dot P Y. So I don't, okay. So to understand better, we are using this import math. So what is this math? It is a math is a library. So what is that actually? I'll go to Google, I'll search, I'll open Google, I'll search for math source, S-O-U-R-C-E, source code, uh, not Java, one Python, Python math source code. So if I open this link, you can see here, Python, that math library is nothing but a very huge Python file. So how huge it is, it is almost about 3000 lines. So 3000 lines of Python coding. So who did that coding? So some developer, so 3000 lines is, they are used, they are created that math library with 3000 lines of code. We are simply reusing that file. So we are simply reading the documentation and we are learning how they have created it and how I should reuse. So we don't, I don't have time to create 3000 lines. So simply I'll create two lines. X is equal to 10 and Y is equal to 20.566. So, okay. So I have a Python file, that Python file is called as my own library. So in, inside this Python file, I have two lines of coding. Okay, done. So where we, okay, here we now need to use return statement. Okay, so uh, one second, sorry. So no, uh, why we are not using the return statement is uh, simply this line means uh, return the square root of X. So this statement means how the developers have created the square root function is they have used the, they have created the square root function using the return statement. So that is the meaning of this statement. We are not creating a function. We are simply reusing their code. So simply if you open this documentation, if you in this entire, in this 3000 lines, if you search where they have created this square root function, you may see, find this return keyword they have used. We simply, we are learning that they have created the first square root function by using the return statement. So what we need to do, we need to store it inside a variable and we need to use that variable. So that is what, so that is where I've taught you what is return statement is. I'll give you some examples because right now I'm creating my own library, right? I'll create one function also. I'll use that function by using a return statement. I'll give you an example. Okay. So right now I'm simply creating a Python file, which is inside my uh, D, fold, uh, D new folder. So it is nothing but my own library.py. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more file, open new file. I'll save it. 
So I'm creating two files right now. I'm saving it on the same file. So save it any name. Hello dot py. Enter. So this is also a new folder. This is also a new folder. So in this file, I'm what I'm going to do is I'll separate this example. You go back. I'll separate it. Okay. Here you come here. Okay. So now right right now I have two files. This file name is my own library, and this file is hello dot py. So what I'm going to do is simply import. So instead of importing math, instead of importing some other thing, I'm going to import my own library. So simple as that. So import my own library. So next step, what did we do in that code? So we used math dot. So say here also you have to use my own library dot. So what do I have inside this file? I have only two things, x and y. So if I use my own library dot x and also same my own library dot y. So let me print those two values. So if I run this print. And here also, if I use this print statement, p r i n t. So now, if I run this code, run. So I'm running this hello dot py file. You can see I'm getting ten and twenty point six six. I'm running this code. You can see I'm getting ten and ten and twenty point six six. So library file is nothing but a Python file. So who created that Python file? Someone else. Developers or some group of people have created that Python file. So our job is instead of writing code from the scratch, instead of writing code from the again, what we are doing is we are simply learning how they have created their file and we are simply reusing the code. So the two files should be in the same location. Yes, the two files should be in the same location. So then only it will automatically uh, uh, and start st start reading from the one file, or else we need to specify where that uh, another file is. So that is some extra still lines. Example normally. Uh, a developer who is creating on project, he will, he or she will put all the files in one folder, right? So normally it will connect. So instead of creating a different directory, we need to have, we need to write some extra steps. But if it is in the same folder, normally it will connect automatically. We don't have to worry about that. Okay. So now, right now we are connecting. So library is nothing but a Python file developed by someone else. To understand the pre, to uh, you to explain this statement, what is return statement is I'm going to create a function. Def my function. Okay, so inside this, I'm going to say return 200. Okay, done. So suppose if I'm creating a documentation, what I'll do is I'll create a documentation. In that documentation, I will say if someone is calling my function, it will return the value 200. So that is what they have did here. If someone is calling my square root, it will return the square root of x. So I'll go here. I'll here. I'll use my own library dot. Inside that, I have a function my function. So same. Math dot square root here my own library dot my function. So what it is doing? So this line will return the value two hundred. So my job is to simply write z is equal to and simply print that z value because I know that. So when I when I run this file, this line will get erased and the value two hundred will come and store over here. So that is why I'm storing it in a variable and I'm printing that variable. So now if I run this code, so I should get my value two hundred over here. So if I run this. I'm getting the value 200. So this is so to say that they have created the function with return statement. So that is why they have used the statement. So always every word is starting with return, return, and return. Okay. So simply uh, now we have understood what is a libraries. So there are n number of libraries in Python. So I'll go back. I'll show you. There are so many libraries. I'll a little bit. Uh, How that uh, variable file is communicating to the main Python file? Some internet issues. Why I missed that? No. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So that that I'll that will be the last topic in Python. Uh, means last topic in right now. So right now, what this means is that was I'm that is that is what I'm going to say. So right now, what this means is this Python standard library. So all these libraries is here is now automatically downloaded in your computer. Remember in the yesterday's class. So we downloaded Python, right? So after downloading Python, automatically all these things are now in your computer. Ready to be used. So simply you have to type anywhere. Simply use import uh, zip or z zlib anything. So we are if you are using any of these given libraries, it will be automatically used. So now that is where we are going to learn the next topic, the final topic in uh, not final topic in modules and libraries. So that is so simply uh, let's go back and search for boto three b o t o three. Okay. So we we know what is a boto three is. Boto three is a Python library. So this library is used to simply connect Python to AWS. I'll also show an example. Right now we are learning what is Boto3 is. So simply Boto3 is also a library. Okay. So to example, I have this example of code examples. It is very much zoomed in. A little bit go back. 
Okay, so when you open the Boto3 documentation, this is the first page you will get. In here, you have code examples. I'll search any, just select anything, EC2 example or anything. Okay, so you can see here, the first line itself, import Boto3. Okay, so now what, what I'm going to do is, I'm, go I'm going to my code, and uh, I'll now I'll erase all those things. Hello.py, my library, I'll erase all this because we have understood the topic of libraries, right? I'll put this code in comment. I'm going to write import Boto 3. So that is what they have written, right? Import Boto 3, I'm going to write import Boto 3. Now let's see what happens if I run this code. So once again, close, close and uh, run this file. So so, okay, so now if I run this, see what happens, no module named Boto3. Why, okay, why it is not understanding what it is going wrong. So let's go back. So let's go open the Python standard library. I'm going to press Control F to search in this page. What do I want to search? Boto. If I search in Boto, no matches. So in this Python standard library, so there is no match called as Boto3. But from the Amazon page, they are saying import Boto3. Why, why, where it is going wrong. So what's happening wrong over here. So that is where I'm going to say that. So these standard libraries is already in your computer ready to be used. But in the world, there are millions of libraries. Each and every company will be having their own set of Python libraries. There are so much of libraries. There are millions of libraries. So how do I use those millions of libraries out of those millions of libraries? This Boto3 is also a library, which is in the internet. Okay. So how do I, how do I download this library? So that is where we are going to learn the one more important topic called as pip. So to understand pip, you have to you open this command prompt. Okay, I'll open the command prompt. It's not visible. One second, let me change the properties, uh, colors, screen text is uh, white and background screen is, okay, so screen text is black. Okay, and the font, I'll increase a little bit, 20, 24, 20. Okay, apply, close, reopen again, command prompt. Okay, so a little bit, fine. Still, once again, font 24. Okay, done. Okay, so we have, I have my command prompt over here. So what, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to use a feature called as PIP, PIP. So remember in our previous class, I told you, right, while you're installing Python, make sure you're giving that check mark. What is the check mark I told you? Python space minus minus version. So if I run this command, I should get the Python version number. If you are not getting this, the, this topic right now, which I'm going to teach you, uh, you have to do some extra steps. So make sure when you're installing Python, make sure you're giving the check mark, add Python 3.82 path. What is the path? This is my path. The command prompt is my path. Okay. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this first feature called as PIP, PIP. What is PIP? Python installation package. Okay. I'll go back. I'll use my, I'll use, where is Go here. Okay. Good. So pip. So Python installation package. So what is Python installation packages? So simply I have all these commands. So pip. So what is pip is? So say I'll go back and I'll say pip space minus minus version to check whether do I have pip or not. Definitely your computer will have pip. So you will get this pip 19.2.3 is in your computer. So you'll definitely have pip. Don't worry about that. Okay. Just make sure you're giving the check mark. So what is the usage of pip is? So if I say pip space list, I'll make this as full screen. So if I make this space list, one first command, which you're going to remember, if I say pip space list, it will tell me all the list of packages. So these packages or libraries I have installed from the internet. So from the internet, I've downloaded all these packages previously while using or from projects, I've downloaded this. Right now, all these packages are now in my computer. Okay, so in this packages, I don't have Boto3, right? Yes, I don't have Boto3. So what do I have to do? A simple one command pip install, just write this command, Boto3. So if I run this pip install Boto3, it will install Boto3 for me. But instead of installing Boto3 here, I'm going to just change only one thing. That is, I'm going to write run this command work on test. For your computer, this will not work. Why? Because in my computer, I have a small virtual machine. So while teaching purposes, I'll install Boto3 because if I, if I teach the same topic for next batch uh, or some other batches, I, I have to, I, to, so to, to reinstall this Boto3, I have this simple virtual machine called as test. So don't forget this part, uh, sorry, forget this part. Uh, this is only for me. Okay. So now I'm working on this virtual machine called as test. Okay. So now if I say pip list, you can see here, 
uh, previously I have so many packages. Since now I'm working in this test virtual machine, I don't have these many packages. Okay, so I don't have that many packages. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this command pip install boto3. In your computer, you can directly run this command pip install boto3 and run this. What it will do is it will automatically go to the internet. It will collect the boto3 file for you and it will also automatically inst install the boto3 to your existing Python. So simply installing the collected packages. I'm only running this one command pip install boto3, but it is downloading JSON path, Doctatil 6, Python, your lib boto core, so many things it is installing. Okay, so because it knows that what are the things necessary for um, AWS, it will install all those things. So pip install boto3. After doing that, successfully install boto3. So now if I go back to my code here, so now if I go back to my code, and now example, if I, uh, in one second, so now if I run this command, so instead of running this here, so now I'll run here, example. So now if I say, okay, one second, so where this file, this file is in desktop. So, okay, uh, C uses, run, okay, one second. So since I installed my Boto3 in my virtual machine, now if I run this, it, it will not work. So C uses, I need to have desktop, right? Where is desktop? So simply one second. Okay, so I said desktop. Hello, if I copy this file, put it in my D drive so I can easily access it. Okay, so now close this file, open file. I'll, where is my D drive? I'll open my hello file. So I did, I, I just, I didn't do anything. So simply from my desktop, I copy the file and I pasted it on a D drive. So I can easily access it from my command prompt. So previously, if I now I'll change my directory D colon slash. So now I'll make it as full screen. Okay. So, so D colon slash. So D colon slash. Now if I run this Python space, uh, hello.py. So hereafter, it won't throw any error. So previously, if I run this code right now, it, it will throw an error that is no module named Boto3 because I have installed Boto3 in my virtual machine. So if I change my virtual machine to test, and now if I run the same code again, d colon slash Python space hello.py and run, it won't throw any errors. So simply, you, if you're installing it normally to your computer, the it will simply not throw any errors. So make sure you're doing the check mark pip install boto3. So why am I installing it on a virtual machine is because on the next next steps, I'm going to show you how to connect to an AWS service. So I'll be installing even more packages. So that is why I simply installed it in a virtual machine called as test. Okay. So right now what I did is, so I installed pip install boto3. So now I've installed all the boto3 commands. Okay, so now boto3 is ready. So hereafter, if I run this code, it won't throw any errors. So hereafter, my computer will understand that I have boto3 in my code. So boto3 is a third party library. Yes, it's a third party library. That is why I installed it from the internet. So, okay, so now we are going to see how do I connect my uh, Python code to my AWS service. So step one, so simply, what do I have to do? So go to my, let's log into my AWS. So AWS uh, services. Okay, so sign into my console. One second, I'll sign in. Okay, so step one is pip install boto3 in your computer. It will install boto3 for you. So I'll give my username. Okay, done. And password, I'll give my password. Okay, done. So now I'm now I, I'm in my AWS. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is so step one. Even what you're going to do is here after the things which we have to which you need to look into carefully. So step one. So now I have my AWS service. So what do I have to do? So go to your IAM. So which is identity and access management. Okay. So what is IAM? Identity and access management is used for creating user roles or users. So right now if I go to users, I have an already user. I'll delete that user. So, because that is me, yes, okay. Commit and last activity, one or more users have deleted the effort running system. Yes, delete it, it's fine. So, one second, let me check if there is any instances running. Dashboards, no running instances, okay, fine. I'll go back to my IAM. Go to your users, 
now we need a new user so previously there was a user i simply deleted it for you it, there will be no users so simply click on add user okay so what is my username i'll give my name for now mitran uh, so devops or something okay so mitran underscore dev okay so because i'm a developer so this is my username so what do i want to access i want to access my aws by using this cli so what is a cli is command line interface so i need to access my aws by using this command line interface so simply after installing pip install boto3 now i came to my this aws i'm 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 opening iam so identity and access management i'm clicking on users i'm creating a new user next permissions okay so now i need to set permissions this user can access how much of the aws part suppose i am the root user so i am creating a new user so which is also me but suppose if i am creating it for someone else so how much access can this user have so simply go to this attach existing policy direct directly click on that so right now we know that aws has so many services we need to use only one service which is and right now i am going to show an example of only one service which is ec2 so if you search for ec2 in ec2 itself there are so many policies we need to i'll check for amazon ec2 full access because to that user i'm going to give full access to of my amazon okay so i'll simply click on that policy click and okay next thing so to that user who is a developer i'm going to give my amazon's full ec2 access okay next step then so do i want to give any key okay so it is optional if you want to give any key yeah, you can also give uh, ec2 developer ec2 underscore d e v e l o p e r so just a tag so you, this is optional you can also ignore it so simply go next review so now it is asking for a review review so you what is the username mitra underscore dev so uh, he has wh what access does he have he, ac he has the ec2 full access okay so now simply create user after creating a user it will give you access id and secret access key so because this two things is mandatory so simply what you have to do open notepad save it somewhere safe and also you can download the csv file so what now what i'm going to do is simply i'm going to copy copy this this is my access key enter and copy this this is my secret access key and paste so now i have these two access keys so now what is this means is here after i can directly access my aws ec2 by using this access key so how can i how do i do that so i'll show you that okay so now i have these two things so simply done close okay so i have closed this so right now i have successfully created a mitran underscore dev and i have my two access keys what is my next step go back to your pip so i'm i'm in my terminal over here so go back and simply write one more command which is uh, pip install i'm going to install one more third party packages called as aws cli so previously i installed pip boto3 now i'm installing pip install aws cli so what is aws cli is so simply aws command line interface so what is aws command line interface if you search in google aws command line interface aws cli so aws cli is nothing but so command line interface with one dual configure okay so this aws cli line is written by python so that is why only python programming language has the access to aws services so whatever the services let it be s3 or ec2 or anything can act, can be accessed by this aws command line interface so how is this created it is created by using the programming language python so if you look, dig into deeper you will get that so that is why i am saying simply pip install aws kc so can't see the comment you are typing okay yeah sorry uh, i'll make it smaller okay yeah sorry so my part my wrong so i'm saying simply pip install aws cli so i'm i'm giving this simple command so now if i run this okay so now if i'm running this command so it will go and install the step 1 pip install boto3 after installing boto3 and uh, simply you can you can do that pip install boto3 step anywhere you want so simply you have to take care of two things pip install boto3 pip install aws cli so boto3 is a package for um, using the resources from the aws aws cli is used to connect via from your command prompt to the aws services so simply think of these two things are mandatory for connecting to aws aws cli and aws boto3 and what did i do i went to my iam management console and next i i created a new user okay i did two things i created a new user by creating the new user i got the access key and also i got the secret access key okay so now after installing so it is installing let's wait for a minute successfully installed okay so pi amal color amal it's in uh, aws cli so now what is your next step so simply type this aws space configure f i g u r e 
So if you enter this, it will ask for your AWS access key ID. So this is global. Even for Linux, you can use the same thing. Linux, same thing. Pip install Boto3, pip install AWS CLI. Go to your AWS IAM, create a new user. You will get your access key and you'll get your secret key. Okay, so sorry, I'll come down. Okay, so you get your access key. So now simply copy the access key, paste it over here. Paste, done. So AWS secret access key, copy it over here, paste it over here, done. So next default region name. So where is your, if you're creating instances, where it will be created by default. So I'll be creating a default on, let's say on Mumbai. So what is it? So if I search for Asia Pacific Mumbai, AP iPhone hyphen South iPhone hyphen one. So if you can't see this, I'll change to EC2. And if I go to here, you can see AP iPhone South iPhone one. So this is the key ID for saying my instances are need to be launched in Asia Pacific Mumbai. Okay, so I'll, I'll do the same thing. AP iPhone this word UTH South iPhone one. So now if I enter, okay, done. So now default output format. So if suppose if you're running an EC2 instance and if you want to get the information, so how do I, so give the default as JSON. So because I want out, I want to get the output in the format of JSON, press enter and done. So now we have, you have successfully configured your machine. So that is your AWS CLI. Now it can be used to directly co communicate it with your AWS services, whether it be EC3 or, S, or S3, EC2 or S3, anything. Okay, so now, uh, suppose if I want to change it, if I wanted, if I did a mistake, if I want to change it, so where, where do I access it? In your computer, uh, after doing those stuff, if you go to C, if you go to users, uh, my user is Mitran. So if you go here, you can see that dot AWS. In that dot AWS, you can see you have two files. One is config and one is credentials. So if I open this credentials, right click, open with notepad, okay. So you can see here, I'm getting this file. You can see here, you can compare it with this AIK, QDG, QDG, okay. So whatever you are given here will be stored in this C drive, C uses mitran.aws. So in Linux, by default directory, if you search for .aws folder, inside this, it will have config and credentials, two files. You can go and modify it or change it. If you're, suppose if you did a spelling mistake, if you're, uh, if you're, if you did a copy pasting wrong or else you can always again type AWS space configure. It will ask for again, okay. So now we have configured AWS services, everything is done. Now it's time to type Python coding. Okay, so in when you're creating an EC2 instance, you need one thing, which is key pair. So you have already known about key pair. So key pair is used to connect your virtual machines directly. Suppose if you are creating so many key, uh, virtual machines, your key pair is used for connecting them. So final step. So let me go to my uh, Python code. Uh, let me type some Python coding over here. Okay, I'll create. So. I'll, in my D drive, I'll create a new folder. I'm going to name it as AWS so that whatever I'm, if I'm getting a key pair that is a PEM file, it will be stored over here. So now let me go to my uh, simply uh, Visual Studio code. I'll write a simple co uh, code example, even though this may look a little bit complicated. So just bear with me because uh, I'll show you where did I take from this code? So how did I get this code? Because uh, yesterday itself, I told you Boto3 is very, very huge. There are so many lines. I did some research to get this code. Example, as easy as possible. Okay, so simple. First thing is import Boto3. Okay, done. So what is my next step? I From EC2, I want to use the resource. So EC2 is equal to uh, Boto3 dot resource, R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E. So what resource do I want to use? I want to use EC2. Okay, I'll select EC2. Fine. So step one is importing and from step two. Boto3 means entire AWS services. But I don't want entire AWS services. I want only the particular thing called as EC2. So I'm create I'm using this Boto3 dot function. I'm creating inside a variable. Okay, that variable name is EC2. Next, I'm going to create one file, out file. So out file is equal to open. What do I want to open? I want to open a PEM file. So what is my PEM file? I know PEM file is used to store my key pair. So EC2 iPhone key pair. So this is my file name dot PEM. So simply PEM and comma open in the format of W. Okay. So now I'm, I, I need to create this file EC2 iPhone key pair dot PEM. So I'm, I'm, this line is simply used to create a PEM file. Next step. From EC, from uh, my AWS, I need to get that key pair. So key underscore pair, 
So I know this is a little bit advanced. Just to show an example, I'm giving this example EC2 that create underscore repair. Even though my Visual Studio code is not helping me because uh, Boto3 is a very huge file, right? Visual Studio code does not, currently does not support uh, that Boto3. So it, it will not help you. Normally, when previously when I was typing, it helped me to autofill the code. Right now, it was not helping me. So I have to very be careful about um, spelling mistake also. Create, create key underscore pair. P -A -I -R. And now, so what key pair? So capital K E Y M A M E is equal to double quote. So this EC2 dot key pair. I'll copy and paste it. Okay. So key underscore pair is equal to ec2 dot create underscore key pair okay done and just three lines of code key pair no so key pair out is equal to string format of key pair dot key underscore m a t e r i a l okay so done and finally print my key pair Okay, so let's see if I run this code, whether am I getting, um, okay, so where is this file, d colon hello.py, I'll use my uh, command prompt to run this file. So Python space hello.py. So if I run this file, okay, so key pair, ec2 key pair already exists. Okay, one second, yes. I, sorry. Delete my key pair. D E L E T E. Delete. Okay. So now let me run this file and let's see. Yep. So I got my key. So you can have only one key for the user, right? So previously I had a key. So I went to my instances. I deleted my key pair. Okay. So I, since I deleted my key pair, now I can go back and you see to dashboard okay so there is no keypad uh, key pass right now so i have this keypad so which is nothing but my you know this you may have already seen this private key so now what do i need to do so simply i got my okay so this two lines is nothing but so simply what is this in this out file so out file okay so right now I'm, i didn't get any out file so i'll show you that example so I'll, I'll explain this code what am i typing so simply uh, what I did is I imported Boto3, so ec2.boto3.resource. So simply what I did is, uh, so I, cre I created a, a simple, uh, this two lines is for connecting my AWS services to uh, I mean, Python to AWS. So in that AWS, I'm saying I need that EC2. So what is my next step? I'm, I'm saying out file is equal to open. So I need a keypad.pem file. So right now, where is it? So I got this EC2 keypad.pem file. So this keypad.pem file is used, for example. So I'm going to store my private key inside this keypad.pem file. So, uh, so that is why I created this. This line is to create a simply pem file. So I've, I haven't completed the topic of how to uh, create files, how to delete files. I'll, uh, so simple, this line is for creating a pem file. So I know this, this lines are a little bit advanced. Boto3 is a little bit advanced, even though it took some time for me to uh, get this code out. Okay. So right now, so just I'm now, right now, I just created a key pair. So I'm, I'm creating a key pair. I'm storing in this variable. I'm simply printing the key pair. So this is what I got. So now what I'm going to do is out file dot write. What do I want to write? Key pair out. Okay. So out file dot write key pair out. Okay. So sorry, I have been losing current for past one hour. So let's see whether I can complete the topic. So I out, out file dot write key pair out and uh, out file dot close. So now if I run this, okay, sorry. Now if I run this, so key pair two already exist. I know that.
Hi guys, this is Karthik. Can you guys get able to hear me? Yeah, hi Karthik. Yeah, actually, uh, suddenly there is a power issue with uh, Mitran, okay? So his laptop went uh, dry, so he cannot able to connect it. So I think almost you have been covered with, okay? So probably you guys can leave the meeting, okay? So I'm not sure that uh, when he will be getting again the back current because for the last two hours he don't have a power. So he was been connecting with this laptop only. So about another 10 to 15 minute session only we have been there, okay? So you guys can drop down. So possibly I'll be sharing you the recording and I will plan to uh, arrange another uh, session for you guys in the coming week for this beat and piece, okay? So now you guys can drop down and you don't need to wait for him. So you guys just drop one by one. So I will be sharing you the video possibly in another one or two hours, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Drop down, thank you guys. Bye-bye.